Hello children, I hope you've seen my previous video on photosynthesis and now you are aware of the conditions or the raw materials required for photosynthesis and also about the end products formed. So let's study a balanced equation of photosynthesis today which is written here. Now here you can see carbon dioxide and water are the raw materials in presence of chlorophyll and sunlight help the plant to prepare glucose and to release oxygen, the life-sustaining gas. But you will also notice in this equation that water is reformed here. Now, it is not that this water which has been reformed there. It is newly synthesized water which is called the metabolic water. Now, in this equation you will find it's an example of a redox reaction. As chemistry students, you all know what is a redox reaction in which oxidation and reduction occur at the same time. Now here you can see the carbon dioxide is getting reduced to glucose, which is a very important event occurring during photosynthesis. Secondly, you will find this water is getting oxidized to form oxygen. You all know removal of hydrogen is called oxidation. So CO2 is getting reduced to form glucose and water is getting oxidized to release oxygen. So if you are asked why is photosynthesis a redox reaction, you will support your answer with a balanced equation and specify that where oxidation and where exactly reduction is taking place. Now, we were discussing on the other day the structure of chloroplasts and I explained to you that inside chloroplasts there are disc-like structures which are called thylakoids and it is these thylakoids which act as a site for the first phase of photosynthesis that is the light reaction. So if you are asked the site of light reaction you have to write thylakoid or you may even write grana. Whereas we discussed that the entire chloroplast is filled with a matrix called stroma. So stroma is the site for the second phase of photosynthesis that is dark reaction or light independent phase. So let's see what exactly is light reaction and dark reaction and what chemical reactions occur during the two. Given here are the equations for the light reaction. Now you will see in light reaction the first step is activation of chlorophyll. How does this activation occur? When sunlight falls on chlorophyll, chlorophyll is a pigment, it's a chemical which consists of electrons. They take up the energy from sunlight. Sunlight is in the form of photons. So photons are taken up by the electrons in the chlorophyll and they move from one energy level to the other. They become highly energetic. Now this is what is happening during activation of chlorophyll. Now what do these electrons do? These electrons now bring about the second and a very important step during light reaction which is called photolysis. Photo means light and lysis means splitting. So splitting of water in the presence of light. This chemical equation represents the process of photolysis. It's quite often asked in the exam. Sometimes all reactions are asked or individually photolysis is asked. So learn to write this equation. Two molecules of water release four hydrogen ions, four electrons and oxygen gas, which is one of the main end products of light reactions. So if you are asked what is the main end product of light reaction, it is oxygen gas. Now what happens to these hydrogen ions and to these electrons? Let's see in step number 3 and 4. Now step 1 is activation of chlorophyll. Step 2 is photolysis of water. These two steps are interchangeable. They may occur in any order. So here step 3 as I have mentioned reduction of NADP. NADP is a chemical compound. You will find its full form in your books nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. Now this NADP takes up the hydrogen ions released by photolysis and forms reduced NADP which we call as NADPH. Now in step 4 what happens? 
an assimilatory power called ATP. You have studied about ADP, adenosine triphosphate is formed. And all this is occurring in presence of light. So we call this step as photophosphorylation. Photo means light and phosphorylation means adding of a phosphate group. So in ADP which is adenosine diphosphate, a phosphate group is added and it forms ATP that is adenosine triphosphate. So now we have three end products, oxygen, NADPH and ATP. NADPH and ATP are called assimilatory powers because they are used to power the dark reaction. Now let me tell you that there is hardly any difference between the occurrence of light and dark reaction. But yes, it is clear that light reaction precedes the dark reaction. By how much time? Just one thousandth of a second, which is so minor that we often ignore it. But that difference is there and reason is that in light reaction, two such things are being prepared which will help to power the dark reaction. Light reaction is also known as photochemical phase. At times you are asked why is it known as photochemical phase because it is occurring in the presence of light. Now let there be no misconception that one is occurring in light and the other is occurring in dark. As the name says, the word dark has been termed as a misnomer because photosynthesis itself means synthesis of food in the presence of light. That means I, whether it is light reaction or it is dark reaction, both are occurring in the presence of light. But it's just that this depends on light, it is powered by sun's energy or light energy and this does not depend on light. So earlier it was called dark reaction but now it was termed, it is termed as a misnomer and it's been replaced by the term light independent reaction. So we have a light reaction or specifically a light dependent reaction and we have a light independent reaction. There are some other names given to them as well. Like for light reaction, I told you, we also use the word photochemical because it is dependent on light and a chemical reaction is taking in the presence of light. We also call it Hill's reaction. It's named after Robert Hill who worked out these chemical reactions which are occurring during light phase. Coming to the dark phase or dark reaction, we have four different names. First, dark reaction because it does not require light, not because it occurs in dark. Second, as the name uh, specifies, light independent reaction, independent of light. We also call it the biosynthetic phase because leaf is a biological uh, machinery and glucose is being synthesized in the dark reaction. So we call it biosynthetic phase. And we also call it Calvin cycle. I know it's a lot for you all to learn. But once you learn it, compartmentalize it in your brain, you'll remember that light reaction is known as Hill's reaction because Robert Hill worked out the chemical reactions occurring. Also known as photochemical reaction because it's occurring in light. Dark reaction, light independent reaction of course. Why Calvin cycle? Because Melvin Calvin and his co-workers figured out what was happening during the dark phase. Also known as biosynthetic phase because the second main product of photosynthesis, these are the two main products. So second main product of photosynthesis that is glucose is being formed here. There are lot of chemical reactions in dark phase but at this level there is no need for you to go into the details. So all you need to know is the most important or the major step which occurs during the dark phase is reduction of carbon dioxide to form glucose. This is the main event happening here. Now this glucose not during dark reaction but later on gets changed into starch by a process called polymerization. Now you all know glucose is a monomer and several such monomers combine and form a polymer which is starch here. So this is the fate of the end product of photosynthesis. If you are asked what is the fate of the end products? Now three end products you can see here. 
glucose what is its fate it undergoes polymerization and forms what starch then you have oxygen which is released into the atmosphere used as the main respiratory gas even the plant again uses it up the metabolic water which is reused by the plant for the process of photosynthesis so this is the fate of the end products and it is wrong to call oxygen as a waste product this is another question which is asked why not call it waste product it's not going waste it's a life sustaining gas on this earth so it's wrong to call it a waste product so if you are asked why is dark reaction a wrong word why is an, uh, a waste product a wrong word you should know the answers for that now in this reaction you can see carbon dioxide gets reduced to glucose and it is using the two assimilatory parts which i had mentioned here atp and nadph atp is getting converted back to adp and nadph is getting converted back to nadp again atp and nadp are ready to participate in the light reaction so it's a continuous cycle light reaction followed by dark reaction and this goes on so i hope it is clear to you what is the site of occurrence of light and dark reaction thylakoid or grana and here stroma what are the end products oxygen nadph and atp and here glucose adp and nadp that's it continue working and we'll continue with the lesson in the next class